Helen, you were the central figure in a New York Times article titled Computer Science Students Face a Shrinking Big Tech Job Market. Tell me the story of how you single-handedly exposed Meta. Let me just try to paint a picture first. So imagine this. I'm an intern. This is my second time interning at Meta. This is my junior year internship. So it's really important for me to secure that return offer because it's like a new grad return offer. And if I get it, then I don't have to do any interviews for my full-time job. So this is really important to me. And then all of a sudden, four to five weeks into the internship of a 12-week internship, I hear news that the interns may not be getting return offers. Like, of course, that causes me to bat an eye, right? Like, I'm trying to figure out if this is actually happening. So I'm asking around and it seems like people don't actually really know what's going on. And the reason is because what happened was that all the managers got an email from the execs and the email was like, hey, so the interns are not going to be getting return offers this year, but we're still going to do all of the calibration, all of the review cycles. So don't tell them and make them think that they're still going to get return offers. But like, obviously, managers are genuine people and some managers are close to their interns. And so some of the interns found out through their managers and word of mouth, you know, this kind of rumor travels fast. So it was pretty much confirmed that we were not getting return offers. So there was like a split of two kinds of people during that time. It was like people who were like, we're not getting return offers. Let's just like try to study and get a different full time job. And there were also interns that were like, this is just like a scam. Like we're getting return offers. Like you guys are being dramatic. But obviously I'm a lot, me personally, I'm like a little bit pessimistic. So I was like, let me prepare for the worst case scenario. Let me start interviewing and like, let me just try to get like a full-time job that's not at Meta in the case that we don't get return offers. So that day when I found out of this news, it was like 11 a.m. It was like right before lunch. I went to lunch. And then because of this news, I went home because I just wanted to process this. I was like, unbelievable. It was unbelievable because I interned at Meta for two summers. This was my second internship. And like, I thought this is where I was going to end up full time. Like I was thinking about this all the time, telling everyone I'm going to work here full time. And so this was just like life changing news to me. So I went home, took a nap, woke up and I was like, I need to express this. I need to tell someone. So I posted a TikTok and the TikTok was like, hey, since Meta is not giving us return offers, anyone want to start a startup with me? And I posted that. And this got a lot of views. And I forgot about the fact that like not everybody knew about this news. It was like internal news, but I kind of exposed it to the internet. So the comments were like, what, what, what do you mean Meta is not getting return offers? This is crazy. And the reason this video was so big is because Meta was the first company to announce no return offers. So 2022 summer, actually an infamous summer where pretty much no big tech companies gave return offers. Or if they did, it was very little. So before it was supposed to be 80% return offer rate, these big tech companies were giving like 10% return offer rates or even less. Um, so like Google, Amazon, Meta, all of them, no return offers. Meta was the very first one. And it was like first by several months. So Google didn't really tell their interns no return offers until late August or something. Meta told us mid, uh, early July. So we were the first to find out. And the news was huge because Big tech companies had never done this. It's always been like, you intern at a big tech company, you do your work, you get a return offer and you're set. But that's not what happened at Meta. And this is what happened. And I just like posted online, it exposed it. Some reporter saw the video and then reached out to me because I was posting some other videos about it. I was like, oh, guys, the computer science job market is so hard right now. You should be happy with any job you get. I was mostly projecting, but because of like all that projection, it got on to the New York Times, and obviously there's a really big audience for that, and it kind of exposed Meta. So why did Meta not give return offers? What was the main reason behind that? Yeah, so what happened was that in 2021 and 2020 during COVID, there was literally a mass hiring. I remember getting the return or getting a Meta offer in 2021. I barely knew how to code because I didn't really start coding until high school senior year when I took my first like APCS class. But I like that's pretty late compared to a lot of people. So I didn't really study CS in my free time. I mean, I went to Carnegie Mellon, but like I was a freshman applying for job. Actually, I was a sophomore applying for jobs. Um, and I didn't really know how to interview. I did, never did lead code before until beginning of sophomore year. So Meta was really hiring anyone that had 
a heartbeat, really. You could solve these problems. You, all you had to do really was memorize all these leak code questions. And then 99% of the chance you would get a question you already seen before. You would just type up your memorized answer and then immediate job offer. So they hired literally everybody. I remember our intern class was so big. It was like 2,000 people maybe of interns. That's crazy. And then after that, stuff with the market happened, like something about interest rates. I don't remember if they something happened with interest rates. And because of that, and they had the mass hiring, they had to lay off a bunch of people. And obviously, the first ones to go are interns, right? Like, if you don't need more people, you just don't give the return offers to interns. You don't want to like lay off your full time employees because they have more knowledge. But interns, like they don't really have much knowledge. So the best business decision is to just not give return offers. How did Meta react when they saw your TikTok? Yeah, actually, so they didn't see my TikTok for a little bit of time, but then they did. So I actually had a meeting with like Meta HR. They were like, hey, can we hop on a call? And I was a little confused what it was for because this was like three weeks after I posted my video. I was like, sure, yeah, what's up? And they call me and they're like, so this news about no return offers, it wasn't supposed to be public news. It was supposed to be internal news. So like you weren't supposed to say this. But I was a little bit shocked because if they're going to get this news out to the interns, obviously we're going to react a certain way. And I think it's reasonable for me to like be really shocked at this and I don't know, post my thoughts on the internet. It's like free speech, right? So that's how they reacted. And I guess like they also reacted by not giving me a return offer. But I feel like that might have not been the cause of my videos because a lot of people didn't get return offers. Did they put any pressure on you to take it down? Or what was their actual reaction? Like, did they try to force you to take it down or what happened there? Yeah, so it's, this happened a long time ago, but I think they might have told me I had some sort of NDA where I should have taken it down. But I remember not signing an NDA. So I was like, oh, I don't think I have an NDA and I can say this kind of stuff. Plus this news, like I didn't... Pr- post any internal proof that they sent it to me. Um, I just heard word of mouth and I posted it online. Like it could have been a rumor, but they could have just treated it as a rumor. But instead, they confirmed it to be true by telling me I wasn't supposed to share this with people online. Wow. So basically by them trying to crack down on it, they confirmed it actually was right. Yes, basically. Yeah. So the NDA thing is interesting. So they, correct me if I'm wrong, did they just like almost make up the fact that they they signed an NDA just trying to get you to take it down? I think it could have been a scare tactic. I'm not really sure what was happening there, but I don't remember signing an NDA. I looked through my emails. I didn't have an NDA. I do know some companies do make interns sign an NDA because like you have access to like IP, but I did not have one from Meta. So I was like, oh, I don't think I have an NDA. Maybe they misremembered and thought they gave me an NDA, but I don't think I didn't have to take the video down or anything there. They couldn't force me to basically. Got it. Is that video still up today? Uh, Yes. A bunch of the meta videos are still up today. I left them in the past, but like you have to scroll pretty down through my TikTok to be able to find them, but they're still up. We'll find it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. So another question I have here is why, why did they want to hide it from the interns? And what I find interesting is that not only, I think it's normal. Okay. Like fair enough. Maybe they just, they overhire, they had to cut jobs they couldn't like they'd have the budget for it but what's not okay is leading thousands of students on making them do all the performance evaluations making them sit there for the whole internship under the false premise that they may get a return offer when there's literally zero chance exactly that was exactly what i had in mind when i was like posting all the stuff online so they kind of tried to lead us on which was crazy also even when people knew they weren't getting return offers there was still so the review cycle is called calibration. There was still a calibration process. So you still had to like submit reviews for the interns. You had to get peer reviews from your peers. It was crazy. Like They still made us go through the review process, even though they told us and pretty much confirmed that we weren't getting uh, return offers. Um, I think the reason for this or the reason why they didn't want interns to know was that they didn't want interns to just give up on their project and just like mess around for the whole summer. I mean, we were getting paid, right? Like we were getting paid a good amount. So And we were doing somewhat good work for the company. So they didn't want us to just be like, okay, like we're not getting return offers. Let's just like screw off this summer and do whatever we want and still get paid. So that's what they were trying to avoid. But ultimately, they didn't avoid it well because what happened was that it would literally be like me and a giant group of friends. We would book out an entire conference room and we would do leak code there for like six hours a day. Like we took up company resources to practice lead code for other companies. And I also remember booking meeting rooms so I could do interviews for different full-time companies. Like I would just do it in the meeting room. So I don't know. I feel like they didn't really avoid what they were trying to avoid. Yeah, this is an interesting time in tech because you're mentioning how like it was the summer of 2022, which is super infamous. 
And my background here is like I was interning at Amazon during that time and I did not get a return offer. But now I'm realizing I'm like, because before then I thought it was like pretty standard. It's like you do a good job, like you get a return offer. But now I'm like looking back and I'm like, I think part of it was also like the market dynamics. I think I was, unfortunately, I didn't know. I didn't get to like the managers weren't communicate, communicative or anything. Well, if there's anything happening behind the scenes, but that was super interesting. And then my Shopify situation was also very similar where I did a Shopify internship in the fall and they did give me a return offer, but it was like a verbal return offer. And they're like, oh yeah, my manager was like, yeah, you get a verbal return offer. You're good to go. It was like fully remote. It was like mid six figures. I was like super happy. My whole fam- family celebrated. They were like, Amon has like a great offer. I'm going to travel the world. I'm going to do all these things. But the weird part was they just wouldn't give me the contract for some reason. It was like December. They were like, yeah, I saw the number. It's like, you're going to be really happy about it. It's like really competitive. I'm really proud of you. Everything's good. And week after week, month after month, they just kept not giving me the contract to sign. And that was like super weird. And then eventually came my manager actually DM me on LinkedIn being like, hey, man, you should probably start looking for other jobs. I don't know what's happening, but like things are kind of weird and sus around here. So that I got that message and I was like, holy shit, what's going on? And I still had hope in my heart because I didn't actually see the actual you know, email or anything. I didn't see any proof. But all my friends and family were telling me, dude, you should probably start recruiting all the way until March of 2023. Um, right two months before I graduated, then they rescinded the offer. Essentially, like HR got on a call with like a hundred Shopify interns who all got return offers, and just one after another after another was like, "Sorry, like no offer. Best of luck." Um, there's like one guy I think out of the hundred who got a return offer. <laughs> there were like one or two people, and then I remember the Discord. The one guy was like, "I didn't want to say this, but because I feel bad for all of you guys, but I actually got an offer." <laughs> Oh my God, that's crazy. That was was insane. And now I'm realizing like, why did they not want to tell us? It's because they wanted to delay the decision as long as humanly possible. So it benefits them and not us. And I think kind of similar to what you learned with the meta experience, like these companies are only optimizing for themselves. Like they don't actually care about you at all. Yeah, exactly. I agree. And I want to point out that it's kind of just like these big tech companies. I don't think I had a similar experience when I was working at like smaller companies. I think like they really do actually look out for you when you're working at a smaller company. But I guess like in for a big tech company's defense, they just have so many employees um, that like it's just so hard to like make everybody happy. So maybe they just don't try to. Sure. Yeah. And then the other thing about your Shopify offer is that like I have a, so many friends who were like, yeah, I have a return offer. I got a return offer. But it was like a verbal return offer. And every time they were like, I have a verbal return offer. I was like, no, you don't. You don't have a return offer. And every single time I was right. Every re- verbal offer that summer was not an offer. It was crazy. Wait, that's actually insane. So like what other companies did you just like know of your friends who got verbal offers, but just didn't end up translating anything? Well, Google for one of them. So Google gave verbal offers. But the crazy part is that So some of the Google verbal offers actually did translate to full time offers a year and a half later, which was kind of crazy because like most people don't even wait that long. So Google was one of them. Um, Amazon, I heard some verbal offers, but they turn into no offers. Um, Yeah, I think that's like all. And then like obviously Meta. Meta actually did give verbal offers, but a lot of them were also just rescinded. So another question here is I heard some news about Meta paying people for rescinding offers. Did that happen or do you know anything about that? I don't think they paid people. Oh, res- really? You think they uh, like, are you claiming that they gave them an offer and then rescinded it? it was like, oh, well, give, we'll give, yeah, you give them like a month of salary or something. No, no, this really? didn't happen. I actually oh, wow. have a friend who like got that meta offer and then like right before he was going to start rescinded. But That's crazy. No, no compensation. No, nope. man. Maybe I need to look into this. I yeah. remember some some company gave like they had to give like a month or something mm. just to. Or maybe they were fired one month in or something and then they got severance. Oh, that something like that. May- maybe which is actually but insane. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it was a crazy time, like yeah. back back then, um, with the job market. I guess another question here is like, how did you even get that as your first internship? Because that's a crazy big tech company, like a really good offer. I mean, at the end of the day, like we you told the story of what happened, but still a great re- name on your resume for two internships. So how did you get that offer? Yeah. So yeah, to start off, Meta was definitely a really great name on my resume. Like with that, with Meta on my resume, I was getting like crazy amounts of interviews. Like I was able to get all the interviews that I wanted. Um, how I got it. So I got a little bit lucky with the timing. So I was interviewing uh, summer for summer of 2021. And at that time, all these companies were mass hiring. So I was interviewing at Meta, Databricks, Bloomberg. I was interviewing at so many companies as a sophomore, but like all these like prestigious companies. 
And all I had to do was go on LeetCode, buy LeetCode Premium. This is not an ad. <laughs> um, and t- tag, like, select, there's a tag on LeetCode. So I select the tag for Facebook. I go through all the questions. There's, like, maybe, like, a hundred of them that are like unique questions that you have to go through. I go through them, make sure I understand how to do it. And if I don't, I just like watch YouTube tutorials of how to do it. And then that's it. Like that's all, that's all it took to get the interview. So when I did get the interview, the questions were very simple. It was like, I remember my first question. It was like, return true if a string is a palindrome, otherwise return false. And this is just like such a crazy, like, it's just so easy. Well, bro, what? Yeah. (laughs) And it was for a 45 minute interview. Like, I was just like stunned. I was like, okay, well, this is really easy. So I think I got really lucky with the timing because nowadays meta internship um, interviews are not like this at all. They they have leak code questions, but they tend to be leak code medium to hard. But back then it was leak code easy to medium. When did you you do that interview? When did I do it? Yeah, do you know when? Um, Yeah, so a funny story of how this went was that my boyfriend actually got the meta internship at that time. And I was like, what? That's so unfair. I want a meta internship. So he reaches out to the recruiter, refers me and is like, hey, like my friend from college is looking for an internship. Look at her resume. And we had like very similar resumes. You know, we went to the same college, took the same classes, had the same experience since we were sophomores. Um, And so the meta recruiter emails me. But that goes to my spam email and my spam box for some reason. So I'm sitting here for like three months, like, dang, the meta recruiter still hasn't reached out to me. I'm so upset, but whatever. One day I decide to check my spam email and I see the email that's like, hey, let's schedule your interview. But it was for like September and it was currently November. And I was like, oh, crap. And I was like, hey, so sorry. I missed this email. But like, can we get the scheduled? And I was like, oh, it's over. Like, I'm not going to get it. She's going to ghost me. But since they were mass hiring, she actually replied immediately was like, let's get the scheduled. So that's how the interview process went. And I interviewed in November and finished around December and then got the offer and then like accepted almost immediately. Nice. That was probably in 2021 or 2020. Uh, that was t- 2020. 2020. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Wait, wait, wait. No, 2021. 2021. Wait. Sorry, I'm getting my time. Li- yeah, no, because it was summer 2021. So it was December 2020. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, interesting enough. Like, I actually interviewed for Meta the year after. Oh. Um, but they gave me a lead code hard. So oh, I was like, fuck unlucky, with that. Unlucky, unlucky. <laughs> yeah, so I messed that one up. Yeah. Um, I hadn't like, I didn't, I don't think at the time I even discovered lead code really. Oh, um, that's un- very Yeah, unfortunate. which I didn't know about. But I think it's funny how like, at least back then, I don't know how things are changing now with the whole like cheating on interviews and stuff. That's something I should ask you about, actually. Oh, yes. yes. Um, but back then it was it was actually insane. Like if you just knew about Lee Code and you spent like three months studying it. Yep. Also, the tagged questions thing. That is such a good hack. That's what I did for Amazon. I just did like 50 of the tag questions. And I just got a question I got and I was like, OK, two seconds. Here's the offer. Yep. Go on Amazon next summer. You know? <laughs> like yeah. things are actually insanely different back then. So that's super interesting. Listen up. If you're struggling to land an amazing software engineer full-time job or internship, or if you submitted dozens of applications and you feel like nothing is working, or if you failed multiple online assessments and interviews, or you just feel like you don't understand the process to land a great offer in the market of today, I actually run a school for people like you called the Software Engineering Accelerator. Now, over the past year, we've helped dozens of people land incredible jobs at internships at companies like Google, Amazon, Microsoft, Tesla, Salesforce, Adobe, LinkedIn, Capital One, MongoDB, JP Morgan, and the list goes on. And the best part about our program is that we actually guarantee the outcome. If you don't get the full-time job or internship you want, you don't pay. So if you'd like to work directly with me and my team of FANG recruiters and engineers to land an incredible job in tech guaranteed, click the top link in the description and submit an application to join us.